Hi, my name is Yosef Mishapiro, and today we're going to be talking about CSV files. CSV files are often used to import and export data to and from Shapiro. So things like products, orders, inventory changes, vendors, those can all be imported using CSV files. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about CSV files and what some of the pitfalls are that we see when customers try to use CSV files to import data into Shapiro. So first, a bit of background. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values, and as the name implies, uh, it's a file where the values are separated by commas. As you can see in this simple file, we have the first row is the field names, so we have a SKU name and a barcode, and the next row is the actual values. And as you can see, the commas separate those information. And this really is all CSV file is. Any CSV file you download, you can open in a text editor, change it, upload it back up without any trouble. The problem is that when Microsoft Excel or a similar program is used to edit the file, you do have some things that happen that could present problems. So that's what we want to talk about today. To illustrate what I mean, I'm going to open an Excel file and input a date. So I'll use a format that Shapiro uses, year, month, and day. And as soon as I move away from the cell, as you can see, Excel changes that to a different format. It does the same thing with long numbers. So if I put in a long number, it changes the scientific notation. And finally, let's try a zip code that has a leading zero. If the number, as you can see, Excel removes that leading zero. So these, of course, all present problems if we're editing information in Excel exporting as a CSV and then uploading it, if Excel is going to change the numbers to a scientific notation or change the format of the dates, when you upload that into Shapiro, the information will be wrong. Now, to fix this in Excel, if you're creating a new file yourself, you can simply change the format of the column of the cells to the text format. And that's going to tell Excel, don't change anything, leave it the way it is. So if we take the same examples, and I put in the eight, leaves it. I can put in a long number, and it leaves it, and my zip code, and it leaves it. So this is ideal. This is what we want from the file. We want that information not to be truncated or changed in any way, uh, and that works great. But what happens is if you download information from Ship Hero or from a different program, you could run into these issues. So first let's talk about Ship Hero and how we try to handle that and what you can do to make that process a lot easier. So if I go to my bulk edit page, we do have this download products, which is gonna download all the products from Ship Hero so you can change them in Excel. Now this is a CSV file, um, but if I open in Excel, you'll see right away, if you go to the barcode column, we do have some scientific notation here. Uh, and again, this is because it's a long number Excel sees that and changes it to scientific notation. Now, in Ship here, we do have the option for you to check off that says, I'll be opening this in Microsoft Excel. And if we download that file and open it, as you can see, these barcodes are not converted to scientific notation. The way we accomplish that is, if you look at the actual value, we kind of pretend it's a formula. So we're telling Excel this is a formula, and we do that by putting the equals and the quotes around the number. And this way, Excel won't change anything. When that file is uploaded back up into Shapiro, if we see this equals in the quotes, we ignore those and we just have the, the value that we want. So that's how we'll handle it if you download the information and then use that file to upload it back up into Shapiro. Um, if you're using that, it works great. Other times where you might be uploading orders uh, or other information where you didn't download it from Shapiro, you do want to make sure first you change the column type to text uh, from general. So in Excel, as you can see in the format cells, the first one is general, and that's kind of the catch-all where Excel is going to try to figure out what is this data. Um, if it looks like a date, it's going to convert it to a date format. If it looks like a number, it'll be a number. What we want is text. So if you're creating a file with orders, make sure your zip code column is text. Make sure your date column is text and using the right format. You only need to worry about these um, in those cases, so dates and numbers, for things like addresses, 
um, or name. You don't have to worry about it. Excel doesn't do anything with that information or with that, that value. So you can leave that as the general format. Uh, but again, those numbers, make sure you do convert them or set them as text. Now, what happens if you have a file that you downloaded from another software? Say you're moving over to Shapiro, you've exported your barcodes and your SKUs from another program, you want, you want to upload, it, upload them into Shapiro. Once you open them in Excel, if you do that to edit it in any way, it's going to convert to scientific notation. So I'll show you a trick you can use if you do have a CSV file so you can open it in Excel without having to worry about it. Now, if you just open the file straight, it will do that conversion. It won't give you the opportunity to change the column types before you open the file. So what you want to do if you do have a file is go to data and then from text, and then you'll choose the file that you want to upload. So I have a file that I downloaded previously, and I'm just going to open that here in, in Shapiro. And what it's going to do is going to give me this text import wizard. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is simply a way for me to tell Excel what is this file, how, how is it structured, how do I want to import it into Excel. So you do want to make sure it says delimited, um, and that basically just means it's separated uh, by some character. And when you go to next, you'll just choose comma. And now you can see in the bottom of Excel has recognized that there are different columns. It recognizes that there are headers. Um, and we can now go to next where we're actually going to do the column data format. So you can see by default it is general. And what we want to do is go to any of the columns that we have concerns about. So for example, barcode and change that to text. Now in this case, it may just be barcode. If it's some other format or some other file, there could be other fields that you want to convert. Um, you might want to convert SKU as well. So if your SKUs are long numbers, you want to make sure that the SKU column, which is over here, is also converted to text. Now, there's no downside to converting columns to text if they're not, you know, you don't have any concerns about them or they're not numbers. If you if you represent it as text, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So you can certainly err inside of caution and convert other columns to text, even if you don't necessarily know that there's data that could be converted. And once I hit finish, and it'll ask me, where do I want to put this data? And OK. And as you can see, Excel now has all this information. My barcodes are not. Uh, scientific notation. There's no there's no need to do that formula trick. Uh, this is a text column, so I can go add or change any of that information, and it'll be uploaded into Shapiro without a problem. And again, uploading that into Shapiro, for example, for the bulk edit, will be done here. You can upload that file. It'll be imported, and as long as it's as text, you won't have any issues with the the numbers being converted to scientific notation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And thank you for watching.